We have reached the halfway point of the 2020 NFL season, and we welcome you for stopping by and chatting with us for a while on this latest edition of Grilling the Birds, brought to you by Inside the Birds, along with my man, Trey Thomas. I'm Derek Gunn. And Trey, Eagles have uh, eight games in the fold, eight more games to go. They're coming off a big win, what should feel like a big win over the Dallas Cowboys, 23-9 to put them at 3-4-1. But myself, I thought it was just me coming out of that game. But as I've listened to radio, sports talk radio across the region and on social media, people are disappointed, disgusted, frustrated with the way the Eagles play their game. Did you come out of that game feeling the same way? Absolutely. This, I mean, you know, yeah, you get a win in Dallas, but it didn't feel like the big win that it was. I mean, you know, you come out of there, this offense, you were playing against a Dallas defense that was averaging almost 30 points per game. And then now all of a sudden we're out there only – we scrape to get 15 points out of this game. Carson Wentz comes out of there with four turnovers all by himself. I mean, you had a defense that you could – they were averaging giving up almost 200 yards per rushing. And, you know, again, we get away from the play call. You come out of there with four sacks, two fumbles, two interceptions – it wasn't a game that you felt like, oh, yeah, we just went out there and just mopped the floor with the Dallas Cowboys, which we should have. And, oh, yeah, you know what? If the defense didn't get that fumble, I mean, this could have been ugly. Now, it was good that Danucci just wasn't that good of a quarterback, that the stage was just too big for him. But, I mean, you know, you put, the, you put this team up against a halfway solid backup quarterback, and this game might have a totally different outcome. Yeah, thank goodness Andy Dalton didn't play in this game because the Eagles would have been in trouble and people would have been ticked off. Now, you brought up a few stats. Let me just enhance those stats for you just a little bit just to make you feel even worse than you already feel and I feel. Uh, the Cowboys were giving up 408 yards a game on defense. They were giving up almost 35 points a game on defense. This Eagles offense, even though it's a depleted offense, still had enough weapons to put up 28 and 29 points against the likes of Pittsburgh and Baltimore. They generated 222 yards of offense and 15 points. <laughs> so when you sit back, and, and you know, we'll get to the defense in a while, but when you sit uh -huh. back and look at what this offense did, I, I put this under the category of this is a team that plays up or down to its level of competition, and that's not a good thing. No, that is a huge problem because what if you – I mean, this is a team – you should have mopped the floor with this Cowboy team. Yes. I mean, they, just like us, their offensive line was depleted. Danucci, I, 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 to me, just watching him on the field, it just looked like he was afraid. And a lot of people will go back and be like, you know what, I, I don't know. And I don't know if this was a good defensive – game for us or if it was just because Danucci just didn't come to play or you know and then our offense man Carson was just continues to struggle even though it was good to get some of our guys back off of injury to get Dallas Garden back to get regular back to get Jason Peters back but we still only put up 15 points against the team that was giving up 30 points per game mm. now the consensus is that the problem is twofold the head coach and the quarterback all right, let's start with that quarterback, as you mentioned off the top of this show. Two interceptions, two more fumbles. He has 12 interceptions, 12 fumbles for the season, uh, 12 touchdown passes, uh, 12 interceptions. He has accounted for 16 of the team's 17 turnovers this season. I'm trying to be patient, and I'm thinking this is going to get better. But at this stage, eight games into the season, I don't know if he can or will get better this season, Trey. Uh, you know what? I, I'm hoping that this extra practice day that they're having today will help them get better because, I mean, this is totally different from any other season when you're going into the bye week and Doug was like, oh, whoa, I know everybody wants to get away from here, but no, nah, I need y'all to show up for practice on Wednesday because we need to kind of clean some things up. So hopefully you can get some of this corrected with an extra day of practice during the bye week. But who knows? I mean, you know, some of these issues are not calling a timeout when needed. When you're calling and running up to the line of scrimmage, 
and trying to run a play on fourth and three. And you're like, all right, you know what? We're, we're scrambling to run a play, which ends up being a sack fumble. Or Carson Wentz scrambling to the left when all the right receivers are to the right. Everybody's on the opposite side of the field. And Carson is like, I'm going to go this way. You know what? Let me go away from where everybody else is. And then you're trying to wait for Dallas to turn around to block for you to, to, to throw the ball. My question on that one particular play on the first sack fumble, when you go back and you look at that formation, we're in 12 formation. So now you have both tight ends on the line of scrimmage. You have a receiver out there to the right that's on the line of scrimmage. So yep. now what that means, you have eight players on the line of scrimmage. You have to have seven. If you have eight players on the line of scrimmage, that means that the tight ends are ineligible. You can't throw it to them anyway. I think that's the rule. Now, you know, I might want to go back and check it out. But to me, <laughs> Dallas went blocking because he knows, hey, man, I'm on the line of scrimmage. You can't throw me the ball. <laughs> so, you know, hey, I mean, <laughs> you know, and Carson is like waiting, like, hey, you had already broke the pocket. Throw the ball away. Just get throw the ball out of bounds. <clears throat> You you were already going in the wrong direction anyway. Get rid of the ball. Just get rid of the ball. You know, Trey, early on you're talking about that initial fumble, and I'm watching it. And, you know, it, it's one thing to lose the ball because you get blindsided. He could see the pressure coming. He could feel the pressure coming. I'm screaming, throw the ball out of bounds. Throw the ball out of bounds. Why didn't you throw the ball out of bounds? And, Trey, I'm telling you, I mean, this is a mistake. This is a mental mistake that you see a first or second year quarterback make not a fifth year veteran being paid handsomely to yeah. be your so-called franchise quarterback. I know, man. And this is the thing I wanted to go back and just see, okay, you know what, what down was it? Because I'm wondering why did he feel like he needed to hold on to the ball to try to make that play because it was totally unnecessary to try to do that. So I'm trying to go back second and 19. So, you know, man, just go ahead and get rid of the ball. Like, don't, you know, it's not like it's third down where you have to try to hold on to it to try to make a play. Go ahead and just get rid of the ball. It's second and 19. We're already out of gas. You, you know, just get rid of the ball. Be third and 19. Maybe they can go into their bag of tricks and come up with something different. It's second and 19 on that particular play. At least you have another down that you can try to get something to happen. But instead, you're holding on to the ball. You go left instead of going right. And then, bam, there you go, phone. What alarmed me was after the game when he stepped to the podium and said, I'm going to continue to be aggressive. Uh, it's, that's how I'm wired. I don't mind a quarterback being aggressive, but being physically and mentally flawed is a major problem. And to me, that falls under the category of defiance. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what anybody out on the outside looking in thinks. You know what? I don't know. Am I making too much of it or what? You know what? I thought about this. And, and, you know, I thought about this really hard and used all my little brain cells that was going on up in here. You can make that kind of statement when right. you don't have to worry about being benched. Good point. Good you, point. You, can, you, you can come in and say something like that. You can come in and say, you know what? I'm going to continue to be aggressive. I'm going to continue to do whatever I want to do because this is how I am and I'm not going to change how I'm going to be. You can make that statement when you know that they can't bench you, that they're not going to bench you. You know, so... Yeah, you could go. I, if I felt like, you know what, they can't bench me, I go out there, hey, man, you know what, I tried. It didn't work. I tried to block Simeon Rice. It didn't work. So what? All right. What you going to do? I'm going to continue to be aggressive. You know, but he's the only one on that field that doesn't have to worry about being benched. So you could say stuff like that. You, you can come out there and just say, hey, man, you know what, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing me. Y'all just live with it. I, I got to just keep getting better. Well, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. You know that you're a $100 million man. So, number one, you got how much of your contract is guaranteed? What, a hundred and something million guaranteed? They're not going to cut you. They're not going to trade you. So, they're not going to bench you because they know how, how that would affect them. If you say, all right, you know what, we're going to go with Jalen Hurts instead of Carson Wentz and just go ahead and say something. So, you know, he can sit up here and say all of that kind of stuff because he knows that, you know what, you can't touch me. 
Why Jalen Hurts? Why, why, why not Nate Sudfeld? I mean, you brought this man back. You're paying him $1 million. Even, I understand. Why not Nate Sudfeld? He knows the system. Why not, why not Nate Sudfeld? Just to send a message. More, even more of a reason for him to even take that type of side. Cause he, who, you gonna really, you gonna really start Sudfeld over Carson Wentz? Okay, what That's about him? Okay, now we all know because after watching his limited body of work, we know Jalen Hurts is not ready to run his offense for sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate Sudfeld could run his offense for sixty minutes. Why not activate him? Deactivate Jalen Hurts. Now I'm not. I know. Wait a minute now. I'm not saying start Sudfeld, but when Carson starts doing some of these things. Nate, go in there for a little while, bro. We got to send a message. You're going, yeah. going in there for a little while. You know, I know you won't make these same mistakes. You know, well, I ain't expecting you to be Carson Wentz. But I know you, when you feel the pressure, you'll throw it out of bounds or throw it in the dirt. Let's just go out there and just flip the script a little bit. Why not, why not do that? Why not? You know what? I, I, you know, I, I would even say if you're going to have Jalen Hurts dress, let him throw a couple passes. You know what? And, and – I think another thing that, that Carson is really benefiting off of is not having that stadium filled with 60-something thousand oh fans in there. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, you can deal with being booed by 55,000, but when you got yes. 60,000 raining down on you right now, man, that will really change the way you approach this game. So That's right it. now, he is really – he doesn't have any fans in the stadium. He doesn't – you know, he knows that you can't bench him. You can't touch him. So when you have tables on you, yeah, you can get up there in front of the press conference and say, hey, man, you know what? Hey, I'm just going to keep being me. Mm. That's how I see it. Uh, to me, what I would do, I would say, you know what, Jalen, instead of it always being this little zone read package that we have all the time, every now and then let Jalen go ahead and get out there and just do a traditional quarterback snap. Mm. Throw a pass. Let him see if he can do it. Because now, because now that creates a little bit more pressure for Carson to go out there and perform. But if you keep doing all these little zone read packages and you don't let Jalen show to everybody that Jalen can actually throw the ball and can complete some, because he only has two passes and he's completed both of them. Yeah. So I don't understand why you don't give him the opportunity to do it, especially if you want to put a little fire on the Carson Wentz to make him feel like, you know what, I need to rethink what's going on because this kid can actually fill my shoes if needed. That's inter an interesting scenario you bring up because when you think about it throughout the course of this season, there is a strong group of people that want to move on from Carson already and want Jalen Hurts in there. So if Jalen Hurts went in there, let's say, didn't turn the ball over, didn't fumble the ball, moved the team down the field with his arms and his legs, took him to the house a couple of times, now you got a real controversy on your hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and but see, that's what that's what you need though, because uh, I mean, competition will kind of make the cream rise. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, you know, but that's the only position right now that doesn't have any competition. Everybody else, I mean, look at what you got going on that left tackle right now. Everybody's talking about, hey man, are you gonna start JP over Myalata? Or that's what's right. gonna happen when Blaine Johnson comes up? There's competition all over that field, except for that quarterback situation, because you don't want to stress him out with any type of controversy. Well, right now, the way he's playing, you might need to create a little competition to make him be a little bit more mindful with some of the decisions that he's making out there on the field. You were a mainstay on the left side when you played. Was there ever a point in time when you felt threatened by somebody else's presence or when Andy Reid might have came to you and said, hey, look, man, you know, your game's slacking. If you don't start picking it up, I got somebody standing here ready to go in for you. Man, you know what? Big Red never had to come to me with that, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. you know, like, Juan is always going to be real. AT. You know, he, and Juan was extremely honest with me when Juan I had a Castillo. good game. Juan yeah. Castillo, he was extremely honest yeah. with me when I had a good game and when I had a bad game. So, you know, he would pull me to the side. We would get in there and watch the film. Like, look, T, you can't do this or you got to correct this or whatever so that we can continue to move on. And I received the coaching and then you keep pushing. Even when they brought Winston Justice in to try to put, bring in to be the, 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 the backup tackle for me. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going to come in there and grind and try to continue to keep my job because I know that, hell, they're always looking for new talent at my position. Yeah. So I yeah. need to come in there and do my thing. But when you got a $100 million man that's got a $100 million guaranteed, you know, you, you're set. There is no, mm. you know, that's not, you're not trading me. You're not cutting me. You're not benching me because, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, to me, I just feel like, you need for for the way it's going, for the way Carson is playing, 
maybe you need to let Jalen go on out there and just throw a couple passes. Let him do his thing. But I'm telling you, he is benefiting from, number one, knowing that they're not going to let Jalen throw a pass because they don't want to create a quarterback controversy. And he's also benefiting from the fact that you don't have that stadium packed with fans right now. Uh, the other part of the problem, according to the consensus, is Doug Peterson. Uh, week in and week out, we keep hearing Doug saying, even though when they win, you know, they've won their last two games, Doug has said, we need to fix things. We can't keep doing this. We have to get better. The message is getting old now, Trey, real old. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, because you look at a lot of the, the mistakes that's happening. Yeah, they got to – you have to fix things. You have to – when are you going to fix it? I mean, you have Tuesday through Saturday to – well, Tuesday through Friday to really fix things. Saturday, you're not fixing anything. I mean, right. so we're really Tuesday through Thursday – to kind of fix things, and then you move on from there. So why are you still dealing with some of the situations that you're dealing with? Why are on the sideline some of these things aren't being corrected? You never see anyone, uh, any of the coaches over there with Carson on the sideline trying to talk him up to get things kind of cleaned up whenever there's a big mistake. You see what I'm saying? So, like, anytime you see mm -hmm. an interception, what do you see? You see Carson walk off the field and go sit down, and you never see a coach sitting next to him to correct mm. what's going on with, with that mm. Microsoft tablet. You see him sitting next to Sudfell, and he and Sudfell looking over at, over the Microsoft tablet. Where's the coaching? Where is that? Where is that correction? And to me, if you're still having some of these issues where if Carson's not seeing the field properly, then yeah, that needs to be corrected in practice. You have to take away, and I've always said this when it comes to quarterbacks. You can't in practice at times, and I know you've been around enough, when you yeah. heard coaches come out of there and they say, hey, man, we had a really good practice. There were no balls on the ground. Everything right. was up tempo. Well, that's because you never took away the quarterback's first two reads. So you, wanted, you want the quarterback to feel comfortable where he just drops back. Up, oh, there's my first read. Throw the ball. Bam, there it is. All right, move on to the next play. Well, you need to have sometimes if you really need to drill this quarterback and make him see the other options, you can't tell him that you're going to take those first reads away. You need to tell the scout team, take those first two reads away and then mm -hmm. force the quarterback to see the field. Now, maybe he gets sacked, maybe something happens, but you at least you're making him see something else instead of it always being first read, first read, first read. But then when you get in game situations, they take away that first read and then now you're in panic mode because what you've been practicing all week it's not yep. there anymore. I'm beginning to wonder if if Doug is starting to second guess himself in a game situation to the point where it's affecting his ability to call a game. You know, when you, I'm sure there's things swirling in his mind. You know, down distance. You know, all right, let's do this. Wait a minute. No, that didn't work last time we played. It. You know, let's try this. Uh, well, let's see. What's the personnel situation? I wonder if he's second guessing himself to the point it's affecting his play calling ability. I think so, because, I mean, you can tell that how long it takes to even get the play into the huddle at times. Yep. You know, yep. you're breaking the huddle with only five, six, seven seconds left on the play clock. So that means that there's all this dialogue that's going on to get the play call in and all it is, oh, well, should we run this or should we run that or whatever it is? And then now, by the time you get up to the line of scrimmage, you don't have time to change anything. You have to just go and just, you know, react. And that's a problem. I mean, you know, I, I think that, Yes, he's second-guessing himself, yes, and, and also he's not calling timeouts in, 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 in situations where the offense is at a disadvantage. Yeah. Because, I mean, we, we, we one of the sack, on the second sack fumble, and I did a breakdown on, on, um, on, on Twitter, and I, I broke this play down. You broke the huddle with four seconds left on the time clock. You had three timeouts. You yeah. can't cash your timeouts in at halftime and redeem some extra points. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and call the timeout. You have fourth and three. You need this. But instead, you rush the guys out on the line of scrimmage. And people will be like, well, why didn't Carson call it? Carson is trained to like, look, hey, y'all break the huddle. Let's get up and let's go. As the coach standing there looking at it, you got to say, hey, whoa, 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 we don't have enough time. Timeout. Mm -hmm. But instead, mm -hmm. you don't, and you try to catch the offense, the defense off guard. But really, they caught you off guard because you weren't prepared, and then there's a sack fumble, and now they got another turnover. Luckily, Danucci just – you know, so he, <laughs> he, <sucked. laughs> he sucked to the point where it's already determined he will not start this coming Sunday uh, Cowboy game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, anybody's going to start except Ben Danucci this coming yeah. Sunday. He, he's one and done. And yet, 
you know, you look at some of the backup quarterbacks across the league, and this is another topic for a whole other day. You look at some of the backup quarterbacks, I'm talking second, third string quarterbacks, and a guy named Colin Kaepernick can't even get a job. Mm, I mm, know. Mm. Yeah. That, but that's, that, a, that, 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 that's a topic for another day. Uh, another you know. day. Yeah. But you got Danucci out there. That Danucci. Was just look, Danucci looked like he was like, oh, my God, this is an actual NFL game. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know Fletcher Cox. Oh, my God. Look how big he is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, is that actually oh, Darius Slay? Oh, my God. You know, he just looked like the game was just way too big for him. The stage was way too big for him. He looked scared. He looked afraid. And with all the weapons you have on the offensive side That's of the ball, right. you mean to tell me that you couldn't see any receivers downfield? Everything was always a, hey, let me hurry up and get that ball over there to that little scat route. Hey, let me hurry up and just get the ball away from me because that defensive line looks way bigger than what I'm used to seeing in college. And this at this stage is just too big. And it's prime time. All my family is watching. I don't want any of this. And, and you know, and, and it worked in our favor big time. I'm glad they started Danucci. Awesome. But, you know, <laughs> anybody else, this game would have had a totally different outcome. I'm shocked Mike McCarthy's game plan going into that game for Danucci to get him comfortable was one, two, three, throw. You can go to either side of the field and you got three guys, not one, not two. Oh, no, you have four guys because, you know, Cedric Wilson doesn't get a lot of publicity and he should because that kid's a legit receiver in the National Football League. So you have four speedy options. And you look at our secondary outside of Darius Slay, you know these other guys are not shut down corners. So I'm mm-hmm. surprised they let him stand back there. Now, obviously, he was running for his life a lot. But, you know, thank you, Mike McCarthy, for calling uh, the wrong game plan for this kid because, you know, forget the, the bubble screen and all these quick hitches and stuff. I'm telling you, he could have ran slot routes on our secondary all day, slant routes on our secondary all day, and they did. You know, and, and much to the credit for the Dallas Cowboys organization for blowing another game, thank you very much. Um, you, you brought up Jalen Hurts. And you brought up a good point about maybe let him have a series and throw the ball instead of running the ball and so on and so forth. I'm going to say something, and I can't wait to hear your response to this. I'm done with the Jalen Hurts experiment. Yes, I, I'm I don't want to see. I don't want to see him coming in for two or three plays. I think you're bringing him in just to justify that you drafted him in the second round of the National Football League when you know you should have drafted for another need. I, I'm tired of looking at Jalen Hurts in a wildcat formation because. Most of the time, it doesn't work. And look at how many times he comes to the game and the, the, the clock's running down, the time clock's running down, and they're still trying to figure out, okay, what are we running? Are we running this or are we running this? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't want to see Jalen Hurts in that situation, in that kind of role. Either you're going to put him in and give him a quarter, give him two or three series. I don't want to see two or three plays out of Jalen Hurts. I, I'm done with that experiment now. Yeah, I, I don't like it. Uh, you know, I, I would much rather, if you're going to bring them in, at least let a pass be tied into it. Everything is all right. We're going to run a zone read. All right, option. You know, you, I, the kid is a quarterback, man. Either you're going to let him throw or don't. You know, and, and I get it. it I think he, uh, I'm right there with you where I think they tried him out there just to justify yeah. this second-round pick to show, like, hey, man, you know what? He can actually get on the field. We're using him. This is our second-round pick. We're actually using him, but to me, I just feel like either you're going to let him throw it and be an actual quarterback every now and then instead of this always zone read option, yada, 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 like like he's actually going to fool the defense. And I keep Mm -hmm. thinking, like, all right, maybe Mm -hmm. this when they run him out there, maybe they're going to actually, like, all right, you know what, we've been running him so much that maybe we can put a little pass to it. Oh, no, no, we're still going to run the zone read option and just get the kid lit up. You know I mean, you know, like he's going to try to actually beat one of these corners to the pylon, line, and they went right. on and lit him, lit him right on up. Like, here you go, take some of this shoulder pad to your chin. Um, do you think this team getting healthy will make a difference down the stretch, or do you think they're just a mediocre team in 2020, and in any given Sunday, we don't know what team's going to show up? You know, I, I hope that getting this team healthy will actually benefit us. I'm, you know, you're getting some of your weapons back, having Reger get back out there, having Dallas get back out there, uh, you know, having JP back, you know, hopefully that this group will start to settle down now. Maybe, I don't know. 
are we are we still even with the healthy team are we still going to be able to go up against the likes of Seattle and Arizona and whoever else Green Bay because Green Bay even I mean you know they're struggling as well but even with our health are we able to go up against some of those teams I really don't feel it I mean you know I mean we had a pretty healthy offense going into Dallas and it only put up 15 points against the worst one of the worst defenses in the league exactly and now we didn't use a lot of Dallas right. Garter, but I mean, you got Rager in there a little bit. You know, you got uh, Fogum is definitely he's shown that he's he's legit. But right. other than that, I mean, you know, are we going to be able to go out there and run up against the likes of those other teams? I I, I don't I you know I, I I'm, I'm glad you brought up Dallas Garter because I'm shocked. I'm shocked that they didn't use him more in the offense. Especially with this offense struck. It was like he was almost non existent. How many how many yeah. targets did he get? A couple in the game? Yeah, I think he only I'm got like maybe shocked. two or three targets. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, with him coming off of his ankle injury, I really wasn't, you know, I was okay with them not having to force the ball to him as much because I would, you know, I, you definitely don't want, you want to learn from the Deshaun Jackson situation where you get Deshaun Jackson back and then now he's done for the rest of the season. So, or not for the rest of the season, at least eight weeks. So at least yeah. with the Dallas situation, I felt like they were trying to be a little bit more cautious instead of just trying to get him out there and rush him into it. Because let's see, I think Dallas guarded only was targeted with, uh, let's see, he only had one target, one reception, one target. One target, okay. the whole game. One, one target, the whole game. You know, I, you know, because I mean, he is coming off of a ankle fracture and high ankle sprain. So at least, you know, you get him out there, get him reacclimated back to get in, getting into the game. You have this bye week. So I'm, I'm glad they didn't force him into it instead of just having him come out of there with nine, ten targets and taking a beating coming fresh off of IR. All right. Uh, before we continue, I'm going to make a, a, a pause for the cause here and, uh, and talk about one of our promo sponsors here. Uh, the season is in full swing and the action is still unfolding. So head over to the DraftKings Sportsbook. America's top-rated sportsbook app. With so many storylines across both professional and collegiate sports, this is the time to check out all the DraftKings Sportsbooks uh, has to offer for you. If you haven't tried the app yet, head to the App Store right now because you don't want to miss this. Now, to celebrate Sunday's action, DraftKings is ensuring all new users are covered up to $1,000. That's right. You bet they cover with risk-free Sunday betting. Now, this weekend, there is plenty of action to get in on and head to the App Store right now and start making it rain. Now, one of the games that I'm really interested in watching on Sunday, of course, is the Baltimore Ravens at the Indianapolis Colts. The Ravens are going into that game as two-and-a-half-point favorites. I understand why Ravens coming off a disappointing loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, but don't underestimate these Colts who have the number two defense in the National Football League. So if the Colts win this game, it won't be a surprise to me. Now, on top of those great sign-up offers, DraftKings offers great odds boost every Sunday to help you make it rain. Now, DraftKings is safe, reliable, secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code ITB when you sign up to get that can't-miss offer. DraftKings Sportsbook is ensuring your Sunday bets up to $1 thousand dollars that's right you bet they cover up to one thousand dollars when you use the promo code itb during sign up for a limited time only only at DraftKings sportsbook i'm all right i'm back to my colleague trey thomas i'm Derek gunn and trey as we flip the script over to the defensive side i thought jim schwartz did exactly what he was supposed to do in a game like this against raw meat and ben mm -hmm. dinucci he sent the house when he had to made that young man uncomfortable all day made him throw off balance made him throw it away and of course made him Throw it to the other jersey as well. Yeah, I think they did a good job. They did a solid job. I think that, um, you know, like you said, they blitzed. They came back. And you, you knew that just based off what you saw from him in Washington, if you dropped everybody back in coverage, if his first read wasn't there, he started getting shook. And then he was like, oh, my God, what do I need to do with the ball? I don't know what's going on. Here, just get it away from me or whatever it was. So, you know, they did it. They did it. They did what they were supposed to do. You came in with a blitz. You came out there. You kept him off balance. And then when you didn't want a blitz, you drop everybody back in coverage. They did a good job in covering because they knew that Danucci, if his first read wasn't there, he was going to panic and just want to get the ball out of his hands. Mm -hmm. But there were times against that Danucci when you saw him just 
throw the little sidearm pass. And it seems yeah, to me he was yeah. more concerned with how the ball was spiraling in the air than in to, to actually make a completion. I mean, you know, it was just – I. It looked like a kid that just was not ready to be on, on this stage yet. A 32-year-old, Brandon Graham, is balling right now. He got his yes, seventh he uh, sack of the season against uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and now he is uh, at second in the NFL in sacks. He's never had double-digit sack season. But I think with eight games in play, if he stays healthy, Brandon Graham is playing at a Pro Bowl level right now. Yeah. I, and, I mean, a lot of his sacks right now are sack fumbles as well where they create yep, turnovers. Yep. So, I mean, you know, uh, he has been really uh, cutting loose, man, and taking advantage of some of these offensive linemen that aren't, that aren't up to speed. And, D- and BG, man, he, he has a, a very – he has a, a, a motor that just doesn't quit, and he comes with that nice little flash-and-go move. And, I mean, you know, it, it gives a lot of these young tackle problems, and especially like a Danucci. He was like, oh, my God, here comes Brandon Graham, and then, bam, sack fumble. Um, you, we were talking about this earlier in the show. Doug Peterson decides to have his guys practice on Wednesday. He said, because we need work, we need to fix things. Okay. You know, players are a little bit upset. Hey, man, you know what? This is our time off. But you think just practice it one day and then these guys going to Mary Way until next week will really help things? You know, maybe it sends a message, you know, because I think as, as, a, as a fan, as someone that's watching the game, I'm like, yeah, you guys need this correction right here. But as a player, I think I would have been like, well, dang, man, you know, I, you know, the bye week, man, I, I want to get out of here. You know, <laughs> and, and really right now. You can't go anywhere. The, yeah, I mean, in the middle of a pandemic, I mean, where are you going to go anyway? But still, you know, just the whole, like, having to come in on a Wednesday to do a meeting and do a whatever we're going to do, you know, maybe that'll help correct some of this stuff. And it definitely sends a message that, hey, what you guys have been doing, isn't acceptable. So we need to come in here and get some things checked, uh, corrected. All right. Eagles three, four, and one. Um, as critical as we have been, the most important uh, aspect is they're in first place in a very, very bad NFC East. They have this week off to regroup, recollect themselves. When they come out of the bye week, they have the New York Giants at the Meadowlands. So, Trey, we are at the halfway point of this season. So I thought we would do a little uh, report card, so to speak and okay. grade the certain individuals in, in various positions. And we're going to start at the top here. Uh, let's start with the quarterback, Carson Wentz. What's your grade on Carson Wentz through eight games? Um, I'm going to go uh, – let's see. <laughs> here we go. Uh, here we go. I'm going to go D plus because okay. he's had some late game heroics. Yeah. But, but yeah, like a – Solid D. You know, it's not an F because you have some wins. You have a couple wins, but it's like a D. Okay. Very I, I, I'm gonna, I, solid, I, strong D. <laughs> so strong D. I'm going to be a little bit more generous. I'm going to give him a C. I think he's been average at best. Um, like you said, he's, he's played well in spurts. The fact that he has 12 interceptions through eight games is atrocious. Okay. Uh, he has as many interceptions as he does touchdown passes. But when you consider, once again, as he's done the past couple of seasons, when you look at the collection of people he's had to throw to out of necessity, I think he's done okay. He's made some big throws. So I'm going to give him a C. All right, okay. head coach, Doug Peterson. Go again. Uh, here we go. Got to go D. <laughs> there you tough. Well, I mean, you know, he's had five, six times where he came in and said, hey, you know what? Given the situation, I probably would have done something differently. Five or six times. Now, he had eight games. I mean, there have been six, seven times. You only won, you only won four games. Now, three. How many games? Three. You only had three games. You only had three out of eight. Man, come on, man. I mean, you know. And the last two, they could have lost. It could have been better competition. Yeah. I, you know what? All right. C minus then. Don't let me change your mind now. You change Stick my mind. Stick with your grade. I, I Stick with your C-. grade. I got to go C minus then. I go C-. All right. I'm, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to say C minus as well. All right. Offensive line, taking into oh. consideration. Taking into consideration. Into consideration. Wait a minute now. They've had okay, seven right. different combinations in eight games on the offensive line. Now, come on now. I want you to be honest and critical, but be fair okay. as well. Okay, all right. You're leading the league in sacks. 
You're leading 32 the league. sacks. You're yeah. leading the league in quarterback hits. Yes. Okay. So now some of those are on Carson, but at the end of the day, it's going to be on the offensive line. You know. Yep. So. Yep. What? I mean, you know, I've been strong D's all around. I mean, I will not give them enough, but I mean, you know, that's another D for me. I mean, because I mean, though, you're leading the league in sacks, and I know that. Hey. You know, you've had seven different combinations and yada, yada, yada. But, man, you just gave up four sacks last week. What, three or four sacks the week before? Six, seven, eight sacks the night the week before? You started the season off even with your starters with yeah. eight sacks, 16 right. quarterback hits, even with your right. starting group. So, right. I, you know. Yeah, I, I mean. Okay, I, I'm gonna. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with you, D. I'm gonna say D plus. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Wide receivers. Oh man, I mean, you know, I got. I mean, <laughs> wide receivers right now is like the bright spot of this team right now with Fogum and uh and, and getting Reger back. I mean, you know, and even with Hightower out there every now and then, I got to give them a B. That's probably like the highest graded, you know, segment I would go with with this team. Okay. All right, you're going to go B. I'm going to say because of the emergence of Travis Fogum, nobody knew who this kid was, and all of a sudden he came from out of nowhere and has already shown in a, in, a, in a very limited body of work that he is a legitimate NFL player. I like this kid. I like first down Greg Ward, uh, the, what he has contributed to this team. I think John Hightower has a lot of potential. He has too many drops, but I think mm -hmm. he has a lot of a potential. We don't know what Quez Watkins can or cannot do in a, a decent body of work yet. Uh, the fact that Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson haven't given you much of anything. J.J. Arthega White said, what, two two catches? Two catches in eight games? Yeah, but he, he has a touchdown. He had, he had to, I don't care. He had ten, <laughs> you're a second-round draft pick, man. You got two catches. In, you had 10 catches last year. You got 12 catches in a season. Play. Give me that money. Let me. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say – I'm going to give the group as, as a whole a B minus because, uh, you know, he's had to rely once again on youth, um, mm -hmm. unproven commodities in a lot of ways. And these kids have risen to the occasion for the most part. They bailed him out of situations. I'm going to go yeah. B minus. All right. Uh, now here's the one I can't wait to hear. Tight ends. You the know tight what? end situation. Okay. So, okay. So, Ertz, you know, had this Why are you stuttering? Why are you still? Well, he struggled, you know, because you start off with all the contract stuff and all that. We get out of that, out of the way. But I think Ertz was struggling. But I do like the way Rodgers had came up when both Dallas and Ertz were down. So I thought Rodgers came in. So I, I would I would give the tight ends maybe a B. <laughs> a C B. A B. Yeah, the, C. Tight end, the tight end position has generated only two touchdowns the whole season. All right. Two yeah, well, all right. All right. Well, C. C. A C? Don't let me change your mind. Stick to your guns, Wait, wait, wait. You gave me the stats, so I'm going to go C. I go C. C. You're going to go C? I go C. All right. I, I'm going to go C also. Hopefully, okay. uh, right. uh, Ertz, right. will come, Ertz will come back healthy. Uh, yeah. Goddard stays healthy. Richard Rodgers continues to can contribute. All right. I'm going to go C. All right. Running backs. The running back position. You know what, man? Running backs have been, you know, Boston Scott has really been doing his thing with Miles yes. Sanders. It's healthy yes. when he can give us something. I think he's strong. So, you know what? Hey, I, I, I give the running backs. I put the running backs right up there with the wide receiver core, and I might give them like an A minus maybe right up in there. Okay. Probably yeah. A minus B. You know, I think the running backs have been a strong, you know, pretty – they've been generating some force because they can only do what's being called for them. And right. I, I think right. that the running game Dell needs to do a better job calling some more runs for them to take advantage of them. But I think that, you know, our running backs have been answering the charge. So I, I would have to give the running backs, you know, maybe my highest grade of uh, uh, A. Minus. Yeah, I'm right on that B plus A minus teeter-totter yeah, yeah, with yeah. the running backs. When Miles Sanders is healthy, he's averaging six yards a carry. Boston Scott has been a great compliment and a great asset and fill-in. Uh, this kid, Jason Huntley, I want to see what he can do a little bit more. I mm -hmm. think, you know, we know what Corey Clement is and isn't. I, I, I would like to see Corey get more touches, but that's not going to happen. I think that's mm -hmm. his role for the rest of the season. But if Miles Sanders comes back strong and can stay healthy, that's a big if. If he can stay healthy, I like mm -hmm. the situation with the running backs. All right. On the other side of the ball, Jim Schwartz, what kind of grade mm -hmm. you giving him? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 ooh, uh, Jim Schwartz, I, 
But man, what? I mean, you know, uh, we've we've been giving up a lot of points. You know, other than you know, let me let me let me let me go back to that thing. You know, let me uh, let's see, Jim Schwartz. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, let's see, let me see. I, I got to look and see how many points we we've given up a lot of points. Well, no, you gave up twenty. What twenty one to the Giants? You gave up. You only gave up nine to Dallas. Um, you I mean, gave up a lot to team. Pittsburgh, and you gave up a lot to Pittsburgh and um, and and and, uh, and, and uh, Baltimore. Um, you gave up a lot to the Rams. I, I mean, what? That was, what is, Come on, man, quit him at home. Wait, 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 like a C minus. Okay, C minus. All right, I'll go with the C minus as well. All right, I'll yeah. go with that. All right, okay. we're in agreement there. C All minus. Right. What about defensive line? Oh man, see now the defensive line. You know, they they you know you have you know you have the interior defensive line and then you have your rush ins. Now right, you know what they're leading the league in sacks though. So I mean you know I I I have to give them give them props. Fletcher Cox has been turning it on. You know you saw yep. some yep. saw some plays out there with the defensive front this game. You know. Uh, what I I, I got to put them at a B really a B minus up there you yeah. know I think the defensive front has been coming along you know I it, of course you want to see some other guys really start to turn it on and, and, and come along but I think yeah. overall when you're leading the league in sacks and you right up there at the top with sacks so all right I got to get a defensive front you know like maybe that B B right up in that range there. Oh, yeah, when you take into consideration Malik Jackson has now been 100% early on in the season. Javon Hargrave was not able to play. Vinny Curry missed some games as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll say B, when you consider what you've asked them to do and you've had to you've had to flip and flop people because of uh, out of necessity, didn't have your full strength there. Uh, I'll go B with you. Ah, linebackers. Okay. Linebackers. <laughs> now, the linebackers came to play. The linebackers came to play this game. You know, what? against against that, yeah, man, Dallas, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the no, 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 I'm saying okay, yeah. Yeah, the linebackers played, man. They balled against Dallas. Now everybody else, no, no. You know, I mean, you know, just based off of Dallas' performance with our linebackers, I get them D minus. Wait, a D minus or B minus? D D minus. D minus. I'm talking about base. I'm talking about the first eight games, not one particular game. The first eight. But if games, I got to go for what, what is your grade? What that what I'm saying? But the, the Dallas game brought the grade up. So it would have been an F if it hasn't yes, been. Yes, yes, it, it would have been. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. It been Because wow. I mean, they had not been playing well. They, the, their linebackers were always a weakness. Tight ends were having their way with us. I mean, you know, they were always out of position. I, I mean, the white wow. snake was just all over the place. Nobody knew. You could look the white snake this way and throw the that way. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Here that was what was happening. And so this game here against Dallas was the first time that I felt like, you know what? Man, all right, this group right here made some plays. The guys came out there and made some big plays. It was a linebacker, TJ. Right. Uh, TJ came out there that caused the fumble. The you know so that got us out extra point that put us in the 20, 20 points. So I mean you know, hey, uh, if it wasn't for this Dallas game, man, they would have been yeah. way low on my on that grade for me. So I gotta, okay. I gotta go. I gotta go deep. I gotta go deep. All right, um, defensive backs. Hold on, you never gave me your grade. What was your grade? But for the linebackers? Yeah. Uh, D plus. I'm D a little plus. bit more generous. I, I'm in a more giving, giving mood than you are. I, I, I'm giving a D plus. Okay, I, all so, right. But we're still in the same range, though. We're I mean, same, we're like the same range. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we're the same range. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be a little bit more optimistic. But okay, that's a okay. stretch right now. That's a stretch. Yeah. Okay. All right, defense, all right, defensive backs. I mean, they've been a highlight, man. With uh, Slay out there, I, you know, I I, I got to give our, our DBs uh what what a B. I put I out give, I give Slay a B plus. What about yeah. the rest of the DBs? Well, I, I mean, you know, so, so I've so, never okay, seen you so, stutter so, like so, this. So we're gonna separate. So Slay gets a B plus A, but then the no, rest no. of them, you know, we go. No, no, no. I'm saying we gotta give Slay a grade, and then hopefully he can bring up the overall the secondary grade. Okay, so so okay, yeah. so <laughs> so we're gonna give Slay. We're gonna give Slay an A. And then we're going to give the other group, like, maybe a C, which brings them up to a B. Okay, because I think, I think Rodney McLeod has, has had a pretty decent season. Right. Um, so, 
Yeah, I'm in the B range. I'm in the B range as a nucleus, <laughs> overall nucleus. All right, <laughs> last cool. last two categories. Uh, special teams. Let's talk about Jake Elliott. F. Jake man. No, you can't get, you can't get okay. Jake an F. All right, all right, yeah. all right. Man, he been struggling, man. I mean, come on, man. He been missing some big. He's kicks, eight of twelve. Man. He's eight of twelve. He eight of twelve. All right. So you missed four. All right. So um, yeah. All right. That puts you in D range. Then I mean, you know what's that? I mean, all right, all right. Let me give you this. Let me give you this. Just see if you want to change your mind. Well, you yeah, know what? He had a lot. He had a lot of touchbacks. So yes, yeah. So that puts you up. Right. That puts you up there. All right. So then, all right, C, C, C. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. You know, uh, from kicks in uh, 20 to 29 yards, he's one for two. 30 to 39 yards, five for five. Uh, 40 to 49 yards, one for one. But the problem is, being 50 plus yards, he's one for four. So does that okay. change your opinion of Jake? Oh, no, nah, I mean, he's struggling. I mean, you know, it's that's why I, I, I got to look at his touchbacks right now, you know, because I, okay. I, when you go with just the field goals, yeah. it's not what you need. I mean, a, a, as a kicker, you know, he's not he, – he's been letting you down. So, to the point where we're going for two, way more than what we usually are. So, I mean, you know, yeah, no, nah, I mean, I, I would really have to go, like, C or D for him because I, I just feel like he's been struggling. Okay. All right. Yeah. And finally, punter, Cameron Johnston. I don't know. I mean, nah, that's what you, what you I, I, I really don't even pay attention to punting. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you're supposed to pay attention to every facet of the game, man. I don't. I, I'm sorry. You got me on punting. I, I, okay. All right. Let me put it like this. I, I never pay that. attention to him. I like, I feel like, all right, good, good job. You got it off. Awesome. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now he's, he's averaged 50 yards a punt and he has 12 punts down inside the 20. That's, that's a awesome. pretty doggone good season. All right, so A. You gonna give him an A? Yeah, I give you him gonna a. give it. You gonna give it A because that's all you know about it, right? Yeah, you gonna I give mean, it a. I, <laughs> <laughs> that's <why I> don't <laughs> think. <laughs> all right, man. All right. <laughs> and he and he does a good job as a holder. So yeah. good job, you know. I, Whatever, man. All right. I, uh, what do you want? I don't pay attention to the punter. <laughs> you know what? Moving forward for the next eight games, I want you to watch the punter, the kicker, no. the holder. No. I can't do it. What? I can't do it. That's like the part oh, of the game God. where I go use the bathroom. Like, hold on, let me go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. Sorry. As we look at it, all right, as we look at it, coming out of the gate, they have the Giants, then Cleveland, Seattle, Green Bay, New Orleans, Arizona, at Dallas and Washington. Uh, now we have to factor in. We hope that this team is going to get healthy on the other side of this bye. We've watched them like a proverbial roller coaster go up and down through the first eight games. How are you feeling about the last eight games at this point from what we know of this team? Oh, man, I, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to go in there and just whoop any of these other teams outside of our conference. I mean, right. you know, maybe if we get healthy enough that we could take on a Green Bay or a Seattle. I mean, Seattle, we haven't done well against Seattle for years now. So, I mean, you know. And Russell Wilson they, playing out of his mind right now. DJ Metcalf is running all over the yeah. field. I mean, how Kinda many yards like did he have in this last game? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is a, you know, this team right now, they haven't shown me that you can just go in there and whoop anybody, especially when you find yourself in a dogfight against the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. I mean, right now, I mean, you know, with, with New York coming in next week, I don't right. know how this team is going to respond to even playing New York. They're coming off of a bye week. You know, if everybody isn't really – you know, you come in on fire. I don't know. You know, we just did sweep past New York. So hopefully we come out of there and just be able to sweep our conference just because of how bad they are. But you never know what this team is going to do, against, especially against Arizona and the rest of these guys, man, that they're going to have to face. Yeah. I yeah. don't see it. You know, you know, hopefully we can get, get out of here and get into the playoffs with just six wins. But who knows? If they go four and four the rest of the way, they're going to win the division with a record of seven, eight, and one. Think about that. Seven, yeah. eight, and one. And four and four is, you know. That's a stretch? Because who, who, who are you going to beat outside of our conference? That means that you got That's to beat, it. you're going to have to beat either the Browns, the Seahawks, uh, or the Packers, or even the Saints. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Let's see. Cleveland. Cleveland, even without Odell Beckham Jr., Cleveland can still put up some points, and his Eagles yeah. team right now cannot. Plus, Cleveland's got a pretty doggone good pass rush as well. 
You know, yes. so that's a problem. Seattle, yes. I'm not counting that as a win. See, Russell Wilson is balling right now, and he's got the weapons. You know, the, psh, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Green Bay, you know, they have to go to Green Bay. You don't know which team Green Bay is, which Green Bay team is going to show up. Um, if Aaron Jones is playing, if Devontae Adams is on his game, that's going to be an interesting and, game in Green Bay. And you got to go see Green Bay in December. Yeah. You know, yeah. Now, you I don't know, think I don't think the weather will be a factor because this team's used to playing in cold weather. I don't think that'll be a factor up in Green Bay. No, it's a little different in Green Bay. Well, I'm from Wisconsin, so you know I know about that Midwest. Okay. So, okay. Well, yeah. See, yeah. yeah see, I'm from Florida. Yeah. I'm I'm a tropical nature being. You yeah. know, so the, tropical so to get nature there. being. <laughs> a tropical. Let me let me think about a tropical nature being. Yeah, I'm okay. tropical. Uh, I'm tropical. Uh, okay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like translation. Trees, I'm all sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, 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 that is not soft. Yeah, you soft. I'm just, you soft. I'm, I'm tropical. I'm tropical. You're not Midwest hardcore. Let's put it like that. No, no, I'm not with Midwest. Yeah. No, I'm tropical, man. You okay, know, it, right. in the summertime, when it's, it's G strings in the wintertime down there, man. You know, hey, when man. the weather is always lovely. Oh, my goodness. Don't worry right, about that. Orleans. Don't worry about that. All right, so we're going to move yeah. on. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? about to tell on yourself, boy. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, then the Saints, the Saints, yeah. I mean, you know, Drew Brees. Uh, now, at some point, Michael Thomas is going to come back, and with our luck, he's going to come back full full steam ahead against the Eagles. Yeah, and then you got the Cardinals. That's that's in Arizona. Yeah, and you playing the road road runner on his carpet. Yes, yeah. That's not so, a, that's not good. That's not good. So I'm going plus to you. Get, yeah, you got DeAndre Hopkins. To go along with old man Larry Fitzgerald, uh, who's still catching ball. That man's 83 years old, still balling. Yeah. You know, their, their defense is fast and furious. They got some great linebackers on that team. They got a good exactly. pass for us. Those boys are balling out there, man. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of this, this season shakes out. But I don't know if I see them even getting five. I mean, you might can go ahead and get, you know, Ooh. three of these. You know, you might can go ahead and get to New York. I see us just getting our conference where you get New York, you get Dallas and Washington again. You get out of this thing with six wins, and then possibly you go ahead and get on into the playoffs. Yeah, last two games at Dallas and home against Washington. And I'm telling you something, I don't think either one of those games are a gimmick because we know Ben no. DiNucci is not going to be quarterbacking when they go to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And the Redskins' defense has kept them in a lot of games. And we saw how the, the Redskins' defense whooped the fit on Dallas. They beat Dallas 25-3. So yeah. eventually, Dallas, Dallas is – I mean, uh, Washington's only issue – did I say Redskins? Not the Redskins. Yeah. The yeah. Washington football, football team. team. I'm sorry, everybody. You were on a roll. I didn't want to bother you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? You can bother me. You can't fluster me. You can bother me anytime you want. Well, I, you know, right. you were on a roll, yeah. so I let not either. Yeah. The, the, the Washington football team is going to get their quarterback situation leveled out. That ironed out mm -hmm. leveled out. Whether it's Kyle Allen, whether it's uh, Alex Smith, they're going to have it mm -hmm. leveled out. That's the only problem with Washington right now is the quarterback situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying they're a playoff team, but – now you're having, a, you're having an extra team get into the playoffs as it is. And there's talk about with if COVID keeps affecting uh, um, players going down and stuff, they're talking about having uh, a report came out uh, that there might be eight teams per conference, which means two extra teams are getting in, and you don't know who those two teams are going to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you never know how it's going to play out. It's going to be interesting, but we'll see how this thing rolls out, man. Eight games left. Doug got these boys in there practicing during the bye week. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> All right. Uh, our time's up. That's going to do it for this edition of Grilling the Birds, brought to you by Inside the Birds. For this unstable individual right here, my colleague, my friend, <laughs> Trey Thomas, I'm Derek Gunn. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll talk to you next week as the Eagles come out of a bye, getting ready to take on the New York Giants up in the Meadowlands. So long, everybody. All right.